Hey there, Fash just here. We're just going to do a tutorial on Behaviour Designer's uh, variable systems and how it interfaces with the uh, rest of Unity projects, including the kit. Um, this works the same even if you're not using the kit, if you're just using uh, your own Unity code. We end up with much the same sort of system. Now, basically, we have three different variable systems if you're using Opsif Behaviour Designer to do your behavior tree AI. Uh, if we look at a behavior tree, the first one you've got is a bunch of local variables or dynamic variables they call them. These variables are unique for the behavior tree and for the instance of the behavior tree. So I have uh, an orc warrior and orc archer, they both have this variable monster AI external behavior tree attached to them and the orc warriors weapon ranges attack speeds will be different from the orc archers and changing them in one will not affect the other, which is basically how you kind of want it. Uh, there is also a global variable that Opsif Behavior Designer supports. These variables are shared within all behavior trees. So um, if a behavior tree is pointing to a variable here and makes a change to it, all of the rest of the behavior trees running in the system will see the same change. That uh, could be used for something like, uh, you see you have a targeted play here, in the, the local variable. So basically in this code or in these trees um, if we can target a player, if we see the player and we can target the player, um, the inspector sets the targeted player detected and other aspects of the code say if this value is not null, ooh, let's do some stuff to it. If you had this as a global variable up here what you could do is have um, two different types of entities, one a sort of a drone monster entity. It would have no see enemy abilities in its tree. It would now have no being attacked entity uh, abilities in its tree. All it would do was patrol and then respond if it has if this global variable is set to an attack target. You would have a parent entity, parent monster entity, which can see uh, can respond to being attacked and it also sets that global variable so in game if the player got close enough to the drones nothing would happen they don't respond to the player if they don't have the player as a target but if it gets close enough to the main monster the main monster sets this global targeted player and everything using that global targeted player would then go hey this variable is not null I can move within attack range I can attack etc etc so all the drones would attack um, even though the player might not be anywhere near the drones at the time. So that's an interesting emergent behavior that you can get from using the global variables. The third set of variables is within your monster characters. And if you look at the character database, um, there's a monster character entity and it has a bunch of variables, li ID, uh, wander speed, visual range, um, hit distance, uh, the hit field of view, that sort of stuff. Now, these are the variables you normally change to set up your unique how your monster works. They do not flow through to the behavior tree. No matter what you change here, the behavior tree will never see this information. The behavior tree will only see the variables in these local variables. So if you change the weapon range in the monster entity, you have this tree attached to the entity, this weapon range is completely unrelated to it is not affected in it in the slightest. It's not great, obviously we don't want that, we would like to be able to just change our kit and then have it flow through into our behavior tree. So there was a couple of options for doing that. If you look at this we have things like uh, move to attack range, if we look at the inspector there's a combat range which is the weapon range and this action moves the game object at movement speed within that range. There's an attack target which does something does a lot of, um, if I can click on it, does a lot of uh, kit sort of stuff, monster entities, transform positions, get attack distances. So here you're asking, if we can retrieve all this stuff within these actions, why don't we also retrieve from the kit the distance that they need to be to attack, the field of view, the how far they can wander. Now, we can do that. Um, I can, you know, we can change the get attack range to actually only go within the distance set to the kit entity. But um, part of the benefits of a behavior tree system is these variables uh, can be adjusted by any action and conditional or what have you within the actual behavior tree. Um, so based on retrieving other information, um, 
the hit points, say, that the monster entity still has, can adjust the attack speed, could adjust the sight range, could adjust the weapon range. Um, as long as the kit entity has a large enough weapon range and you're only adjusting within that range, you can set it up so that a hurt archer will prefer an attack range at its maximum weapon range, a full, fully healthy archer will prefer an attack range at half of its weapon range. So you can set the weapon range to 10 if it's fully healed and reduce the weapon range to say 20 if it's damaged. And because everything else is using these local weapon ranges you can muck around, any action can muck around with these. So that's kind of one, why you would not want to hard code these values. If you hard coded these to use internal kit variables uh, you could basically reproduce what the kit already does and that's an awful lot of work and money to do what you're already doing. So we would like to get the variables out of the kit entities and into our behavior tree so that we can make the changes to our distances, our attack targets, the rest of it in one place and retrieve it into our behavior tree and then use it there. So there are a couple of actions to do that. There is a get monster entity var which is this one over here. And if we look at the inspector that retrieves four different variables and places them into um, the behavior trees internal local variables, dynamic variables, weapon range, attack speed, sight range and ally ID. I can add more and I think offhand while I'm doing these videos I can think of several that I should be adding. Um, it's not a particularly um, resource intensive thing to do, it only basically just goes and returns a variable and pumps it into there so it's fine having this as a, an action. Uh, there are a few others under conditionals that do something similar. Check monster aggression state. That will return the aggression uh, value of the monster, whether it's aggressive or passive or, or other. Get some buff state and uh, there's a check monster state. We use the aggressive state over here. So if you attach the script to a monster that is set to passive, it will neg never target the player, even though this script could target the player. It won't target the player because they're not aggressive. Um, and in this here we're getting our attack distances. Now this is all great. This um, action retrieves all these attack distances. It stuffs them. So it stuffs attack distance into the local variable weapon range. Look at our variables. Uh, weapon range. And then if we look at move to attack range over here, you'll see we use combat range weapon range. So this will move to attack distance to the range that the internal kit entities have defined. So I really hope this works. There's a bug in the Opsif Behavior Designer that if you have a game object open that has a behavior tree on it, it duplicates the first variable. Okay, it hasn't done it. Okay. So we have um, two guys. Here's our warrior. Here's our archer. We'll get close enough to our warrior that he can see us and he will start attacking us. We get close enough to our archer that they can see us and you'll see the archers moved within that range, the warriors moved within that range. So if we pause that and have a quick look uh, we'll see the orc archer has used get monster entity var, the attack distance is 5, the visual range is 5, the attack speed is 1 and there's no ally D set. But if we have a look at the orc warrior, same script the attack distance is 1.5, visual range is 5, attack speed is 1, and if we check our entities we'll find these are the value that's in the entity. So the rest of the script will use the opposite behavior designers local variables and the local variables were taken from the kit entity. Uh, should prevent any issues. Initially when I sent these demos out I had everything running on the archer and if you drag the scripts and put them onto a warrior the variable that I'd chosen for weapon range for the archer, which was basically a hard-coded local variable here, was too large for a warrior. So by using these actions you grab the variables out of your entity, load them into the local variables here, and then the rest of your behavior tree can use them. Definitely, as I said, get monster entity var can use more functions. I think definitely field of view could be another one. Um, if anyone feels there's more that need to be added, when you look at the inspector of this, uh, you do not need to retrieve all of these. They're they're optional. Uh, if you just don't set it, um, it won't it won't retrieve the value now. 
Um, if you look at this little dot here, this is how you set your variables. So pushing it once, it's now ally ID is now a hard coded value at this point. Doesn't really would never do anything, it's pretty worthless. If I click that, and I can get a drop down list which will allow me to assign this value here that comes out of the action into a local variable. Uh, you can create a new one by clicking on the dynamic. So that's the basics for variables. If anyone's got any questions, let me know. And I'll try and write up this sort of in a bit of a documentation too on the website because I feel there's a bit of a sticking point for a lot of people. Anyway, have a good one. Cheers.